My son and I gather items to trade with travelers who visit the village. His name is Nicholas. He's a good lad, strong and loyal. I only wish he wasn't so eager to leave the village. I've tried to tell him that the world beyond our lands is dangerous and cruel, but he won't listen. You would do that? I know he would listen to you. You've been out there in the wide world. You know its perils. Yes, perhaps you can convince him. I would be grateful if you would do this thing, outsider. I hope that you can make my son see this. You better do something about it. It makes my heart heavy. I've seen outsiders in our village before. None were like... That's right. I want to go out into the world and earn great glory. I want to hunt the deadliest creatures and claim vast riches. I'm wary of living in this village. I want to do something with my life other than farm, fish, and hunt deer. I know it must be hard for an adventurer such as you to understand this, but... We Skull live very boring lives. There is truth in your words. She has not been herself since my father's death. I can see that in my eagerness for adventure, I have forgotten my duties as a son and as a Skull. You have helped me to see wisdom, and I thank you for that, Skull friend. I came here to study the history of if Nicholas leaves, I fear he will never return. May the Allmaker bless you with many sons and daughters, Outsider. Once again, you have shown that you are a true friend of the Skull. I wish that I could give you a reward that is equal to the joy in my heart, but I don't have much to offer one who has so much already. Perhaps these will prove useful to you. These herbs are unique to the island, and their light cannot be found elsewhere. Many hunters pass through our village, and sometimes the Dark Elves of Ravenloft visit us. They bring us things from their homeland that we can't find on the island, such as spices, fine cloth, and ores that we cannot mine here. It's true we Skull prefer a simpler life than some, but we do still enjoy a luxury from time to time. Take a look. Until next time. Fear to think what would have happened if you hadn't saved me from the elves. My mother. I'm relieved that you were able to save Falda. I admit I wasn't ready to become Smith of the Skull. A trade ship from Skyrim struck ice off the coast near the village, and the Skull took in the surviving sailors. My mother fell in love with one of the sailors. My father and eventually returned with him to Skyrim. Sadly, no. She died in Falkreath, where I was born. I came across a few of my mother's old things not long ago. Among them was a necklace that my father gave to her when they were married. I believe she would want it placed upon her tombstone in Falkreath, as a symbol of her undying love and the great sacrifice she made. If you find yourself in Falkreath, Please, give this amulet to the priest Bruno and tell him that I sent you. He will understand. I don't have much to give in reward, but return to me when the task is done and I'll do what I can. Thank you, small friend. Well, my mother used to say that I was born an angry child. It's true that my heart has always been restless, and fighting was the only way I should find peace. I was a soldier for a time, and then a mercenary, but I was never truly happy until I came here. Well, the dragons are a constant danger, but so far they have taken little interest in our village. Thank the all maker for that. But have they forced us to change the way we live our lives? No, not at all. They are but one more hardship added to the many we already endure. All right then. I... that was quite an adventure we had, wasn't it? Oh, no, most certainly not. I'm a historian. 
I'm here to learn about the history of Solstheim. Solstheim is a fascinating place. We know so little about its past. There are many mysteries that remain unsolved. Yes, that was a most disturbing experience. But to answer your question, the architecture was strange, almost otherworldly. Given that, and the considerable power it must have taken to affect our minds so completely, it would suggest the work of a powerful mage. Either that, or perhaps a Daedra. If so, then may the Nine protect us. Powerful and malevolent entities make their home on the plane of oblivion. Some of the more powerful among them can exert their influence within our world. And when they do, men inevitably suffer. Well, let me think. I suppose it's been nearly a year now. My goodness, how the time has flown. Well, not so far. They think I'm a bit strange, but they seem to tolerate me. In fact, they've been very accommodating, hospitable even. They seem happy to talk about their traditions and history. Yes, yes, of course. Goodbye. The historian has not stopped speaking your praises. The elders talk of Great Sig is much bigger than our village. But why would anyone need so many buildings? The blood of wolves runs through your veins, Skull friend. When we stalk large game, I lead our hunters in tracking the beast. It is also a way of saying that I am the most skilled hunter in the village. I doubt that an outsider could truly understand. But I hope my words have helped to answer your question. The first piece of wisdom I teach to any hunter of the Skull is to ask the simple question. Should I truly kill this beast? We take only what we need, and so we preserve the oneness with the land. The Skull hunt not for sport, but to survive. We believe that all creatures have a right to live as they will, and when we take what we need from them, we thank the beast for its gifts. The less we disturb the land and the beasts within it, the more we respect the wishes of the Arl Maker. Deer, bear, and horker provide most of what we need for skins and meat. Sometimes, when the wolves grow too bold and threaten the village, we must hunt them to cull their numbers. In days past, my brother Torkild and I would share the hunt. But that was... long ago. I wish I could tell you. He had a wild gleam in his eye. More so than most. In my darkest times, I fear he fell in among the werebears of the glacier. Twisted beasts. A curse of Hirsin. True bears are noble and great creatures of the wild. But the Daedra have no skill for creation, so they befile the Allmaker's workings. I've heard tell of men who, by curse or by heart's desire, become transformed into one of those vile things. It is a pitiable fate, and one that I fear has fallen to my brother. He set off from here so long ago, it's hard to say. Could be in Hammerfell for all I know. If you happen to cross his path, be wary. He was a fierce warrior as a man. If he fell prey to his more bestial side, he could be deadly. He never felt the call of the All-Maker as I do. As we all should. We seek to live in peace with the land. But he had an eye for dominance and strength. For unnatural strength. You need look no further than the beasts of this island, mangled by the Daedra. It's not a fate I would wish on anyone, and not what I wanted for my brother. All right, then.
It's so good to see you again. The historian has not stopped speaking your praises. Darstan hasn't stopped talking about the crypt you explored with him. You risked your life to save Valdor. Your name will be honored in our village. We are Nords, much like those you'll find in Skyrim. Long ago, our path diverged from that of our cousins on the mainland. We live as one with the land, for the land provides all that we need. Also, like the Nords of old, we embrace the Allmaker. We do not worship the Nine Gods of the Empire. I was chosen by the people of the village when our last leader, Skaf the Giant, departed the cold world to join the Allmaker. I suppose I've always spoken my mind and tried to do what's best for the Skald. That's why the others call me Fanari Strongvoice. Bandits sometimes come at night to steal our food. They think that stealing from us is easier than hunting for themselves. It will be dangerous, but if you'll deal with these thieves, we would be most grateful. Then may the Allmaker give you the strength of a great bear and make your will as firm as stone. Until next time. So the dragons have returned. For well, many years now, the it's skull okay. have survived worse. Oh, all right then. And you know where to find me. It's good that our people are now free. We can attempt to restore balance to our home. Join you? You mean leave the village to journey with you and fight at your side? Well, I'm flattered, but the village is my home. It's very rare for one of the Skull to leave, and I have responsibilities here. Hmm. You're right. I suppose the others can get by without me for a while. Very well. If you need my help, seek me out here in the village. It was Skaf the Giant, our former chieftain, who taught me the ways of battle. He was a great bear of a man, and a fearsome warrior. I used to be terrified of him when I was a little girl. I was a restless and angry child, and Skaf taught me swordplay, so that I could, as he used to say, put that fire to good use. He was a great man, and a good leader. I miss him dearly. She died when I was very young. She was caught in a terrible snowstorm while returning home from gathering firewood. You must understand that for the Skull, life is a constant hardship. We take nothing for granted. We cannot afford to. Between the wolves, the weather, and the threats in the south, even a simple task like gathering wood for the fire can turn deadly in an instant. We are bound to this land. Like a great pine with roots that run as deep as the tree is tall. I know it must seem strange to you, but for us, the thought of leaving our village is equally strange. The land and the skull are one. There is no other way to say it. I will follow you, skull friend, but I must return to the village afterward.
No! that you chose this path.
not fall.
Have you put those thieving bandits to the sword? Your kindness warms my heart as sunlight warms the skin on a cold day. The skull are once again in your debt, outsider. Until our next meeting, outsider. <laughs> <laughs>